This skull quite literally has the power to make you millions of gold in Sea of Thieves, but how? The new Skull of Destiny contains all the flames needed to light the torches in the Fort of the Damned. And not only that, but it can be used to activate the fort too. Getting the Skull of Destiny is literally a one island voyage, meaning you can get multiple of them in a matter of minutes. Now, the Fort of the Damned is a special world event, unlike any other in this game. Because it's player activated, you can run the event multiple times back to back. It costs one skull per activation, and doing so is going to net you a massive amount of treasure, and that's going to translate into millions of gold. But better yet, upon completion, if we stack the treasure on the vault on this barrel here, we can safely stack the loot over and over again. And as long as the fort is active, no one can steal any of it. It's essentially our own personal safe, and the key to it is the final boss, Grey Marrow. But we also have a trick for Grey Marrow too. If we collect all the explosive kegs on the fort and place them all on this wall here, they'll be safely out of the way of the skeleton mobs, but accessible to us when Grey Marrow spawns. As soon as he's up, it's as simple as... Well, yeah. The vault will always contain a few stronghold kegs too, so you can repeat the process over and over again. One shot in Grey Marrow every time. Now, let's return to the treasure vault for just a second. As long as everything's moved onto this barrel, you're going to be able to have a completely refreshed vault upon every activation. However, this game won't allow you to spawn multiple reaper chests above the allotted amount, even if you stack them on the barrel. And besides, you wouldn't want people to count the reaper chests on the map anyway, as it would be an easy way to tell you're stacking the event. No, what you're going to need to do is bury them. This not only removes them from the map, but also allows the fort to spawn more of them. And hey, you're gonna need 30 of them anyway if you want this weapon set. The only problem with this world event is that once people know you're stacking, well... Uh, there's a boat right next to us. In today's Tales of Getting Booty. Subscribe. Okay, so my dear friend Ciro and I were stacking Fort of the Damned six times. We wanted to make a million gold after all, and halfway through the event, this enemy crew figured it was the best time to attack us. I have no idea why, but we weren't about to lose our hard work to some swabbies. No way. Anyway, we had cleared another Fort of the Damned, and we're currently setting up the loot stack along with Grey Marrow's keg wall when... <gasps> we're getting attacked again? Oh, come on. The same idiots. We got over. I've got a bucket full of bilge here too. Black dog, eh? Hey? That guy's that guy's like a OG. Like these guys are like song zero. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, once again, we had successfully defended our fort, and so we continued stacking. Now, I didn't mention this in the intro, but we had also collected a bunch of tridents from a treasury while we were collecting our Skulls of Destiny. This was to ensure the new skeleton captain waves were a piece of cake too, and also offered us a little insurance in case our keg wall strategy went a little screwy. But at the end of the fifth run of the fort, we were attacked by a brigantine. <gasps> now we're getting attacked. That is it's a brigantine. And so Ciro was forced to reactivate the fort and seal our treasure away. But anyway, this crew had focused all of their attacks solely on the bow of our ship, meaning we weren't even close to sinking. And so with the minor repairs, we forged our counterattack. Go for, go for. Wait, for real? I fucking killed him. <laughs> well, even though I got the black screen, that was sick, right chat? Yeah, they were done. All we needed to do now was finish the fort one last time collect our stacks of loot onto this point here and spam the harpoon. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, look at the loot. The reaper chests would be left buried on the fort for now though, as we had no emissary raised and wanted to stay completely invisible. We'd be returning for those later. But I bet you're wondering, how do we intend to make a million gold without the reaper emissary multiplier? Well, this is where fellow content creator John Bardcore comes in. John Bardcore is an absolute genius, and in two of his videos, he explores how merchant commodities work in relation to the reaper's bones emissary. Usually, commodities are sold to the merchant alliance at a corresponding outpost for maximum value. Selling commodities raises your merchant emissary flag grade. However, selling them to the servants of the flame will also raise your reaper's bones emissary grade. In short, we can collect 75 merchant commodities, that's 15 per outpost, bring them all to the reaper's hideout, raise our reaper emissary, and then sell the merchant commodities to max our reaper emissary to grade 5 instantly, and then sell our 6 times stacked fort of the damned loot at full value, completely undetected. And so we 
set a course for five outposts, collecting up our merchant commodities. And we even ran into a fellow merchant who was willing to buy us another set of commodities, speeding up our collection process drastically. From one merchant to another, could you do us a favor? Of course. Could you buy 15 commodities from the merchant? Oh, of course, I, you're going to do trading rocks. Enjoy, the, enjoy your session, dude. Catch you later. Likewise. Happy trading. And you. Now, with our 75 commodities and a set of trade goods just to be safe, we began to load up our harpoon rowboat for the next part of John Bardcore's strategy. A harpoon rowboat has the power to drag itself on land, meaning that we'd be able to bring our hundreds of loot items right to the servant's feet and sell it before you'd even notice a grade 5 reaper emissary on the map. However, things were starting to feel unstable, like seer thieves unstable. As I undocked the rowboat at reaper's hideout, <gasps> <gasps> Whoopsies. Yeah, these things happen. What in the world? Wait, did you get... <laughs> did Loose? you see that? Nah, what happened? <laughs> uh, the sea had uh, d broke. The sea literally broke. Yeah, this felt like a bad omen. But anyway, with the robo inside the hideout, we just needed to despawn it by throwing five blunder bombs at it. There we go. <laughs> Now, with the commodities separated from our real treasure, we raised our Reaper Emissary and began to sell the commodities. With each box handed in, our flag would gain more and more levels, until... That doesn't seem like... 75, does it? Uh, no, did we get... Wait! Did they despawn? Yeah, our commodities had despawned. But what happened to us next was far, far worse. Wait, what? I you... see it, I see it. O I can see it. Open up. There. Open the... Uh, I'm opening up. Maybe the commodities went down there. Oh no. What the f- No! <laughs> what the hell? <gasps> ah! Where is it? <laughs> I just saw it ah? disappear. <laughs> no way. I literally just saw it disappear. Well, it was gone now. But with that, we were hit with a realization. We lost a chest of legends to this sh uh, yeah, about that. I mean, I count only four. What the f- There should be five. We lost all the loot. What? what? That, that explains like where the commodities are. It's like despawning it on us. Yeah. It's actually despawning on us. Crud. <laughs> Wait, there's- See, Rod, there's only two left now. <laughs> Wait. Setting. <laughs> what? We had somehow found a glitch that had cost us millions in gold. And when we returned with our stash of Reaper bounties, it was confirmed. Our loot was in between dimensions. There, yet gone. Yeah. <gasps> you can see it from outside the tent. Wait. And then, you go in and it's gone. That is just... It's cruel. It's like, hey, hey, you can't have it. <gasps> That's painful. Oh boy, this game. But if you'd like to see me make a crud ton of gold where I sell 30 chests of fortunes, then have a look at this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.